next question from the Vicky Falcon. I like that name, even though I'm not sure what it means, though maybe I shouldn't know what it means. And the Vicky Falcon says slash asks, I enjoyed watching the AMA today, but was surprised nobody asked the following question since it's usually a standard one. Which is your favorite interpretation of quantum mechanics if you have one? Or better yet, to get more insight, how would you rank the interpretations of quantum mechanics? Okay. This is a a very big question that requires me to make a couple of hedges. First off, I'm not a physicist, even if I interview a lot of very accomplished physicists and philosophers of physics. So this answer is going to be superficial and you also ought to take it with a bowl or a shaker of salt not just a grain but a shaker of salt also quantum mechanics isn't even a final so it's not a final theory because it doesn't incorporate gravity but it's not even a final theory of the quantum because the standard model which is built on quantum field theory moves beyond the bare bones quantum mechanical framework. So I think that, I guess in some sense, while quantum mechanics is clearly very much on to something, it's wrong or at best incomplete. And I think that's another hedge to to keep in mind. But toward actually answering the, the question, I recently spoke again with David Albert. We I interviewed him in person when I visited New York City a couple of weeks, which was wonderful. And that episode will be coming out in a week or two. We just discussed exclusively the measurement problem from a more pedagogical direction. And building off of something David says that you will hear, he considers there to be currently three viable candidates, three good theories, because he and Tim Monlin prefer to think of these as theories of quantum mechanics rather than interpretations. Uh, So they think that there are three viable candidates currently, and I'm going to, I guess I'll just first list them in order of my least to most favorite, and that would be Everettian, uh, or the Everettian theory, the many worlds theory, then the spontaneous collapse theories, of which GRW or Gerard Rumini Weber is most famous. And then there are the the hidden variables theories of which Bohmian mechanics is most famous. Then why do I rank them in this way? One, again, keeping that in mind that I'm not a physicist and the way that I think about this is probably not the way that a serious physicist thinks about this is I just find the many worlds brand of the multiverse to be very distasteful and it involves this huge, very bizarre, not intuitive for me ontology. So I don't like that. I also gather that there are some very serious problems with making sense of probability. I spoke about this with Sean Carroll and David Albert in the episode that we did together. If you want to hear more about this, I do see this as problematic, but it just doesn't cause me this visceral distaste that the many worlds version of the multiverse does. Then the reason that I dislike the spontaneous collapse theories is also just a matter of taste and it's not really principled, but I just don't like the fundamental stochasticity of spontaneous collapse so that there's fundamental randomness in the world. I would just like it if the world were deterministic. And that's what brings me to Bohmian mechanics. I like that it is a deterministic theory of quantum mechanics. And then I also like that it seems to tell a story that makes the very mysterious and spooky parts of quantum mechanics, like entanglement or the the twin slit experiments. It makes them seem less spooky. And if you want to hear more about that, you should listen to my episodes with Tim Maudlin and Shelley Goldstein, where we talk much more about Bohmian mechanics. So I hope that 
again, given my lack of expertise in some areas, this answer was somewhat understandable and, and worth listening to. Okay, thank you to the Vicky Falcon. Falcon.